All right, I'm going to show you guys how to install Dingux on Windows 7. First, you're going to download the package that's listed in the description. You're going to extract it to your desktop. And then you're going to have to turn off driver signing in Windows 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to restart the computer. And then once the BIOS comes up, you're going to press F8 to get into the uh, system menu. I have dual boot, so just ignore this part right here. It's going to say advanced boot options. What you're going to do is you're going to go down to the bottom and select disable driver signature enforcement and press enter. Then Windows will continue to boot normally. Sorry, it takes so long. Okay, you're going to open up the folder with the dual boot installer. And as you can see, my ding is on normal. Plug it in. And it's going to come up normal and it says USB mode connected. What you're going to do then is you're going to press B and then use a pen, it could be a toothpick, whatever, and put it in the reset hole and reset it. But keep the B button held down. You'll get an error that says device driver was not successfully installed. That means that this is in USB mode now. So what we do is we need to install the driver. So if you click on the start button here, right click on computer, select properties, then click on device manager, and then you'll see other devices and you'll see the JZ4740 USB boot device with a little exclamation point on it. If you right click on it, say update driver software, then browse and then click browse again and what you're going to do is you're going to go to your dual boot, dual boot folder on your desktop and then select driver and say OK then click next it'll say that it can't verify the publisher of this driver software you say install anyway it'll take a little bit of time Hopefully you'll hear that little ta-da thing. And now it'll be listed as a LIB USB Win32 device. So now the driver is installed. Now all we have to do is run dual boot GUI installer. What you want to do is you want to make sure of your LCD module. I'll give you a link on how to do that. But I have a 325. So what you're going to do is you're going to select your module. Select step one. And as you can see, it automatically comes up and says Dingix. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click step two. And if you look over, you'll see Dingix start to boot up. All right, so now the first screen you have here, just press start for continue. Press start again. Click on yes. And you'll be presented with this menu. You can do a dual boot, which will just automatically boot the native OS. And if you hold select, it'll go directly into 
uh, Dingix, or you can just have it automatically boot to Dingix, and you have to press select to get into the native firmware. I prefer Dingix, so I'm going to select Linux. Select OK. Select Yes. And you're done. Put your SD card in, and you should reboot. And you should see G menu. All set. Bye.